What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. In today's episode, we are going over how to change a standard duplex receptacle, otherwise known as an outlet. I'm gonna show you all the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of this process so that you can do it safely and have the peace of mind that it's done correctly. So if you were meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin and I'm here to bring you the tools, tips and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So you will only need a couple tools for this project. Obviously you're going to need the new outlet, whether you're changing from an old two prong and you need an adapter right now and you want to change it out to a three prong or whatever the case may be, maybe you're changing colors of your outlets. It's a very simple process. You need a pair of wire strippers and a flathead screwdriver and you can pretty much be successful on 90% of the things that you run into. Now let's go ahead and go on inside. We're going to start the process and I'm going to cut in and out to the blackboard and show you exactly why you don't want to do some things or why you do things a certain way. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to change our outlet out. So I have this brown one that's been crudely painted over in white and we're going to swap it out for a fresh new white one today. So the first thing you want to do in this project is make sure that the power is off. So you can use a lamp, a radio, anything that you can plug into this outlet uh, in order for you to check to make sure it doesn't work. So what you want to do is locate the circuit breaker that turns this outlet off. If you don't know what circuit breaker it is, you can use something like a hairdryer. You can turn the hairdryer on and you can go down to your circuit breaker box and start popping the circuit breakers off until you find the one that turns the uh, actual hairdryer off. Or you can have somebody yell and tell you that the light went out. Uh, either, either way, uh, you test both outlets. So this is one of those instances where you could have the top or bottom outlet on a switch and then the other one could be uh, hot all the time or always have power to it. So this can be a dual circuit right here. Uh, they can be separated by a little tang that you remove and you can feed this outlet from either the top or the bottom. Um, or it can only be on one circuit. So just be careful, always test both outlets. Right now we're gonna turn the hairdryer on and then we're gonna go find our circuit breaker, turn it off. All right, now that we have turned the one circuit off, I'm gonna make sure that both of the outlets are dead. So now that we have that off, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna get you both, both angles here so that you guys can see exactly what I'm saying. Okay, so go ahead and remove your cover here. It's a simple flathead screw. I'm gonna go ahead and take our cover plate off here. And now we're presented with a screw at the top and the bottom, so we're gonna head and run this screw all the way out. I chose the wrong flathead screwdriver for this project. Okay. All right, now this is a simple outlet here with only one set of wires going to it. So what you wanna know is that your white wire is your neutral and your black wire is your hot. So uh, you can go ahead and take these off of the lugs. So let's go ahead and remove both of the lugs that have wires attached to them. If you have an outlet that has the uh, has the wires poked into the back, you go ahead and snip those off clean and we will restrip those. But for, uh, I will show you exactly what you need to do if you have run into that situation. Let's go ahead and just fight with our wires a little bit here and get these all off. Okay, so if you did run into the situation where you needed to cut the wires off of the back of the outlet, I'm gonna show you exactly how that would work here. We're gonna go ahead and snip these off and make new loops. So it might be tempting to 
plug the wires right into the back of the old outlet, this is a no-no, and this is why. Okay, this is why you don't stick the wire into the back of the outlet. So let's say you have your, your uh, little cavity where your wire is going to go. In the back of the outlet here, there's a little piece of, of wire that comes in here, or it's basically like a spade of metal. So when you stick your, your, uh, your wire into the hole here, and it goes in through here, basically what happens is that tang will uh, basically go into the side of the wire. So let's go ahead and see our wire is fully inserted here. And you have that tang and it kind of bends down and bites into the side of the wire. Now that creates a thin, small portion of electrical contact in your wire. And that small little spot there is basically a, uh, a part for resistance to increase because you don't have a solid connection. You have just a small spot where that contact is on the wire. It creates heat and then can create failure in the future. Never stick the wire in the back of the outlet. Okay, so now what we are going to do is strip our wires back. So on the back of the outlet, it actually has a strip gauge. It shows you exactly how far you should strip the wire. So it is about, uh, it is about a, a uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch to strip back. Use your, use your, uh, the proper gauge uh, groove on your strippers and then pop the insulation right off of the wire. So once you get the insulation off the wire, you are going to go ahead and make a loop on the end of your wire here. So this will allow you to put it underneath the lug for your new outlet. So you want to make sure that the lug is, or the wire is in the rotation of the screw. So you see here the wire goes to the right clockwise with the tightening of the screw. Now, if you were to install this on the outlet backwards, what this will do is it will kind of push the wire out from underneath the screw. So it's one of those things where uh, it just will make for a worse connection than you want. So go ahead and make sure that you always orient it, orient it that the wire is going to the correct direction that your screw is. So a quick lesson here on the outlet, your wide spade on your outlet is always considered the noodle, which is your neutral, otherwise known as the silver screw and also labeled on the back as white. So there's three different things that show you exactly which side is which on this outlet. It's labeled on the back, they have silver screws, and you have the noodle on the front with the long spade connection. Now the smaller one on the right is hot, otherwise designated with the copper screw or you know brass looking screw and then also labeled as hot on the back. So what you wanna do is if you have only one set of wires, you're gonna go ahead and tighten down the other lug that you're not using. Tighten it down all the way and then put your wire in underneath your other lug here. Fight with it a little bit, get it down underneath there. All right, what you want to make sure is that your insulation is stripped back enough so that the insulation is not underneath the screw, and this is why. Okay, now we are gonna go over why it's important that you strip your insulation back far enough. Now, we are going to look at a side view of the outlet. So we are looking at basically where the screw comes up and is here on the side of the outlet, all right? So when you put your wire in and you have a little bit of insulation or you did not strip it far enough, you are going to have your insulation here, your wire comes out, and then you're gonna have your wire go in through here. So when you tighten that down, you tighten that screw down, you are basically sandwiching, sandwiching this insulation here, and then you're creating a little spot here that isn't getting contact. So you wanna make sure that there's no insulation under your screw, or it's going to kind of try to wedge in there, and you can tighten the heck out of it, but there's still uh, you know, some insulation pinched underneath there, and that's a no-no.
All right, so I hope that made sense. You don't want your insulation underneath the screw uh, giving a improper connection. So go ahead and tighten it down, making sure that the wire is staying right underneath the screw. And tighten it down very hard. Um, give it a, a good turn. Okay, now that we have the black done, we are gonna go ahead and strip our white wire. Now your white wire is going to bend in the opposite direction because when you turn the outlet over, it's going clockwise to this direction, okay? So you're going to loop it the same way, uh, but on the other side of the outlet. So let's go ahead and strip that side back. So using the number 12, usually all of your outlets are going to be a 12 gauge wire. Some of them in your older homes are going to be 14 gauge, um, but most of the time you're going to run into 12 gauge wire. If you try to cut it with the 14 and it doesn't cut on your actual, or if it cuts too much with the 14, I'm struggling a little bit on this one. Just take it, take your time and strip it back the how it needs to be. All right, like we did before, I usually always take the tip of my needle nose pliers and just turn it over the tip. Okay, you don't, you, you can use the, the uh, little hole here in the back of your strippers to make a loop, but I always like doing it with the tip of the uh, screwdriver, or sorry, of the needle nose pliers. So then we can put our neutral lead underneath our, our uh, terminal here and ensure that you are putting the right one on the right side You might fight with it a little bit to get it in there, but a little oomph will get you to where you need to go. All right, now after you have it underneath there and seated, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down, ensuring that it stays 100% underneath that, that uh, screw head. All right, then tighten your extra one down that you're not using. And then now we are going to make a loop in our bare wire, which is our ground. So same way, just turn it over here, and then we are gonna go ahead and put it in our ground loop over our ground screw. Okay, now that we have it in there, you can go ahead and get it seated here and if you are not happy with how it's seated, you can always take your pliers and kind of twist it together a little bit more so that it, uh, it is right there all the way underneath the head of the screw. And then go ahead and tighten it down. Now, easy peasy, that is how you change an outlet. Now, if you had two sets of wires, you had two blacks, coming to the other side and two whites coming to this side and two grounds. That means that this outlet feeds another outlet. So what you wanna do is, uh, I'm gonna show you on the chalkboard just what you wanna do in that case. You don't necessarily have to do it, but it is definitely something that's recommended. So let's go over to the chalkboard. I'll show you what I mean. All right guys, so now we're gonna go over, in case you have two sets of wires coming into your box, this is basically what's going on here, is one set of wires is the line, that is what's coming from the breaker box and powering your outlet. The other set of wires is the load, or the outlet that you're connecting it to, and then another outlet downstream. So this is uh, perfectly acceptable for you to put both of the wires back on the lugs on the side of your outlet and do it as it was before, but not placing them into the back of the outlet. You know, make sure you get them on your lugs. So it's perfectly acceptable to put the black uh, the two black wires back on one side of your outlet and the two white wires back on the other side of your outlet. But in uh, new construction and if you want to do it right, the right thing to do is, is to create a pigtail. What that pigtail does is it's going to connect your two white wires. What you're gonna do is bring your two white wires together and then you're gonna put a wire nut on your two white wires and you're gonna connect a third pigtail and that third pigtail is going to come around and go onto the white screw of your new outlet. And then what you're going to do is take your black wire 
and you're going to take your other black wire and wire them, wire nut them together with a third wire that pigtails down to your outlet. This ensures that if this outlet goes bad, that none of your other outlets downstream will go out. So I hope you guys understand that right there. So the ground being the exact same way, you would, you would take your ground wire up and put a wire nut on it, and then you would bring your ground over and into your ground on your outlet. So your new outlet would only have one black, one white and one ground, just like our example shown here, but you would pigtail off of these so you connect your load down line and make sure that that's always hooked up. So if this goes bad, none of your outlets along go bad. So I hope that helps. All right, guys, I hope that made sense. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall our outlet here and put it back in its outlet box. and time to reinstall our outlet cover. All right, now once you've installed your outlet cover, let's go ahead and hook back up our hair dryer and turn it on and turn our circuit breaker back on. All right, we are back up and running, testing the other outlet. All right. All right, guys, I hope you found value in today's content. Please consider subscribing to the channel as we're doing stuff like this all the time. If you're already subscribed to my channel, well, you know what time it is. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.